In today's podcast we will be covering how to classify fractures that you see on x-rays and quite often as a medical student you are asked to present x-rays it may be in an exam setting or in the clinic so we'll be going through the vocabulary and the process of how to present an x-ray of a fracture. I also hope you'll enjoy some of the artwork that I've created for this presentation. When presenting an x-ray of a fracture or with any uh, x-ray for that matter you want to first of all mention the patient's name, the age of the patient, also when the x-ray was taken, whether it's left or right side that is being viewed, which part of the body is being viewed, and if, for example if it's a bone, you want to mention all the bones that are visible, whether it's the distal end of the bone that's visible on the x-ray, or the entire bone, etc. And the type of view, so whether it's an AP or a lateral, and you always want to mention, if it's not available at the time, that you would like to see an x-ray of the joint above and below. Because remember, this is trauma we're talking about, uh, so that is one of the things you want to mention. When describing a fracture, there is a set nomenclature or vocabulary that needs to be used in describing them. First of all, you want to mention that whether the fracture itself is intra or extra articular, the type of fracture, i.e. what sort of fracture is it? and we will go through this in detail in the next few slides whether there has been any displacement, so has the fragment moved uh, from its original site angulations, is the actual fragment angulating in any particular way uh, whether the actual entire bone has been shortened, has it rotated and is there any associated soft tissue swelling so when classifying which type of fracture you see on the x-ray we'll go through some of the examples here so here's an example of a transverse fracture where the trans is a force which hits it directly and it makes a fracture in the bone. An oblique fracture as we can see in this example here is where the, the force itself is oblique or even the fracture is oblique, oblique and as a result you get a fracture which looks something like this. Now oblique fracture, the thing to remember is if it's greater than 30 degrees it's considered oblique if it's less than 30 degrees it's considered transverse so if a break through the bone is less than 30 degrees it's transverse greater than 30 is oblique a segmental fracture is a fracture where you've got a piece between two different two bones and here's an example of one this can actually also be considered as a comminuted fracture uh, which is which this is an example of a comminuted fracture is a fracture which has greater than two pieces so this has three, one, two, three, and this example has more than three, actually. So these are both examples of comminuted fractures, but this is particularly segmental because you can see a nice and clear segment which has been taken out from the bone. Spiral fractures are quite common. Uh, it, they happen as a re result of rotational injuries. So maybe perhaps the patient has twisted their ankle and the force has been a spiral one, uh, a rotational one and has caused the patient to actually have a spiral fracture. The thing to remember is a patient can have more than one of these in the same bones. For example, they may have an oblique fracture which is comminuted. So they may have multiple pieces here, but it's oblique. Here are some more examples of fractures that you may encounter. An avulsion fracture is a fracture where an attachment of a muscle, for example, say uh, there's a muscle attached to this part of the bone, and due to some great force this bit of bone which is attached to the muscle breaks off and that's called an avulsion fracture so you'll see that the bit of bone is still remained attached to the tendon which is attached obviously to the muscle these tend to happen for example in the hands in, in, in the feet where there's sudden force and causes a snapping of the bone itself an impacted fracture as you can imagine is forces coming together and as a result the actual bone itself gets almost crushed uh, although it's not a crush factor, a crush factor is slightly different but the actual bone itself gets impacted uh, you may see this for example in a neck of femur fracture where the, the piece itself gets impacted back onto the femur itself these two fractures here, torus fracture and a green stick fracture tend to happen in the pediatric population a torus fracture is also called a buckle fracture uh, where because of the fact that the bone has a much greater percentage of cartilage so instead of breaking it actually buckles green stick fractures are also again as you mentioned the pediatric population 
they tend to happen in long bones where one of the cortices is broken one or the other and you may see a bit of angulation uh, where the force actually causes it to bend and break one side but not the other again it's as, a, as a result of the cartilage composition of the bone is much greater so once you've described the type of fracture it is you want to mention whether the fracture is displaced now the, the displacement is always in relation to the distal fragment so in this case it would be this fragment that you'd be talking about so let's just take this example uh, so here's an example of a transverse fracture but also the distal fragment has displaced now when describing displacement you want to say which way the displacement has taken place now so for, for argument's sake let's make this lateral and this is the medial side so you'd say that this is displaced laterally and also you need to mention how much of displacement is taking place in this case you've got a hundred percent displacement uh, laterally it may be for example it could be fifty percent or thirty percent but it's usually nice to give a fairly whole figure as it's quite difficult to give very precise numbers remember regardless of whatever fracture it is it's always a distal fragment I have to stress that quite important point it may be that the fracture you've had is actually angulating again this pr the same principle is which way is the angulation taking place is it medial lateral posterior anterior dorsal volar it all depends on which bone it is which direction the angulation is taking place but it's always worth describing how much angula angulation is taking place so for example if you just have this as the axis we'd say this is something along the line of rounds about round about 40 degrees to 45 degrees of angulation in this case yeah it looks about 45 so if we were to make this again lateral and medial so you'd say that this is a transverse fracture of the mid shaft of the femur and the distal fragment is angulated to 45 degrees laterally it may be that as a result of the fracture the overall length of the bone has shortened so in this example we have a transverse fracture of this particular bone uh, it looks like a femur which I've drawn and however the overall length has been shortened a classical fracture which gives you shortened bone is a neck of femur fracture in which a patient would have a leg which is shortened and externally rotated it may be that not only do you have a fracture you may have a rotation of the distal fragment here is an example of where the distal fragment although it was initially like this I've depicted it here where it's actually rotated from, he from here to there in the sense that it was initially like that I hope you get what I'm trying to show here having now been through the various ways of describing a fracture we'll actually look at a real life x-ray of a patient with a fracture and we will present it with the technique we've just learned now okay so if I were to present this x-ray I'll give you a few seconds to have a look at it before I give the answer away so putting it all together is if I were to present this this is a plain lateral radiograph of the right humerus and elbow of Mr. John Smith a 40 year old male taken on the 2nd of February 2012 the most striking abnormality is a spiral fracture of the distal shaft of the humerus which is shortened and posteriorly displaced about 50% I would also like to view an AP view of this particular fracture and also like to have radiographs of the entire humerus shoulder and wrist joint I'm unable to comment if this fracture is open or closed which can only be done on inspection so that's a very vital point I've mentioned there to whoever's listening is that you cannot say if a fracture is open or closed until you assess the patient if it's really really obvious where a spike of a bone is really sticking out of a patient's arm or and the soft tissue has been penetrated you may be able to say this is an open injury but if an injury or a fracture looks closed on x-ray does not necessarily mean it is actually closed what we mean by open or closed is whether there's a contact from the outside world into the bone so I hope you found this little uh, podcast useful. Try to put this into practice when you next go to clinic and I'm sure you'll do very, very well. That's all for now and thank you very much.